everybody out there. Okay, well, welcome to the Art of Fire. And this is our 30-minute uh, glass blowing demonstration. And today what we're going to show you is glass snorkeling. Uh, we're live from the Art of Fire studio in near Damascus, Maryland. Uh, good morning, Lynn. Glad to have you with us. Uh, I'm Bruce Ferguson. I'll be doing the camera work and a little narration and explaining what's going on. And if you'd like to see how all of this will fit into another piece, you can join us on our Facebook Live presentation at 11 a.m. East. Before we go any further, I'd like to also mention that we've got our charity event running for the month of March. It's the uh, the charity is No Kids Hungry, and we're making Maryland Cats a limited edition series of these beautiful sleeping cats right here. So that goes towards uh, charity, and shipping's included, except if you're overseas. They'll be signed and numbered, and again, they're a limited production. We have more information at our website, artoffire.com. So, let's step on over here. To the gentleman that is going to show us how to snorkel. And this is Todd Nancy. Good morning. Okay. So we'll be doing this also again on our uh, Facebook Live presentation, but this is a good way to get introduced to it. So Todd right now is heating up a piece of color on the end of the blowpipe. What color is that, Todd? Yes. Oh, this is my color. This is a chunk of uh, Duro. It's a stiff. Oh, okay. Is it a white? It's a white. That's why I'm heating it right now because it takes so long to heat up. Ah, okay. So while he's uh, heating this piece up, um, as far as the snorkeling, this is to create a different kind of cane. Uh, you've seen us pull cane before where we've taken a piece of color and rolled it out into a cylinder and then covered it with clear glass and pulled it to various lengths and made pieces out of it. But uh, what we're going to do today is make what's called veiled cane, in which the color is pretty much on the outside. There'll be a very, very thin coating of clear around it. But for the most part, the color will be filled with clear glass, which is a, a rather interesting way and quite a departure from what we normally have. And I got a few pieces uh, here on the display area. While Todd's getting this heated up and prepared, we'll take a look at a couple of pieces over here. And these mosaic designs, or these squares that you see, show you a little bit about what we'll be doing today. So we have uh, choices in how we align it. In this particular piece with the cranberry pink, we have little squares and you can see where the pink is the outside boundary of the Murini and the inner portion is filled with clear glass. Here's another piece made in the same style, only there are a variety of colors in it, but we still have the outer boundaries with the color and the interior with the clear glass. And if we turn those little squares of glass on edge, we get an effect like this, where we're looking through the color instead of through the clear. And you can also tell a really interesting effect with this, the edges of each band. For instance, there's several blue ones there in your field of vision. The edges of those are a darker blue than the center. And that's because you're looking through the blue the entire length of that little square at those points. And you can tell which way these uh, squares have been turned you'll see the blues running up and down, the extra pink is side to side there. So that's how they were laid out and that's how we can make these mosaic patterns. We can also do it with the standard type of cane that you're used to seeing where we have the lines of color. There's a couple of beautiful vases done with the linear pattern of the cane. And uh, as Todd said, the color he's using is very stiff so we've got some samples laid out over here to give you an idea of what things will look like. Hello, Joanna, welcome aboard. So these are the canes, or Murini, laid out. And I can't tip the camera fully over because it'll start swiveling, but in the lower set, you can see where we have laid these little pieces out 
so that you're looking down into the clear glass and this would form then the colorful boundaries around each square. In this other set, we've turned them 90 degrees so that you can look down at the color. Now it's not showing up real well because we've got the white paper behind it, but there's no light transmitting. But if we pick up one of these and hold it up, and maybe with the light from the window behind, you get an idea of how there's the transmission of color through that. And that's what you'd see in a finished piece. So then the question becomes, how do we fill this thing up with clear glass? Well, there is a fairly easy way, and that's to make an open cup and then just bring more glass to it and fill it up. But that's not quite as exciting as snorkeling. Snorkeling is fun. Uh, so, and it's also something that a uh, one glass blower can do alone very easily. Todd's made all the canes for these pieces and then uh, made the Murini from that by himself. So he hasn't had any assistance with that. Right now he's got the very thin layer of clear that will be on the outside of the color. This is going to help things uh, manipulate. Uh, if we've got just pure color on the outside, it's a little harder to deal with sometimes. So what he's going to do now is stripping off some of the clear glass from that color. And he's going to shape this on the marver. He's going to get it ready for, uh, he's going to blow it out a little bit. And then he'll open up the end of the cylinder, not near the blowpipe, the far end of it. And then he'll take that cylinder and give it a special shape that will allow him to hang it over the edge of the furnace, drop down into the glass of the furnace, and yes, he's actually going to suck in on the blowpipe to draw the hot glass up into the pipe. This is the appropriate time for everybody watching to say, Ooh! In fact, we'll all say it too. So, uh, we have a lot of questions when we show folks this, and it, uh, it's not hazardous as long as you're careful and know what you're doing. He's going to create a shape with this cylinder of glass. That's the last part? Yeah, that last part, yeah, that's the trick right there. We, we only have the people that have never done it before do it live. I'm, ki I'm kidding. <laughs> Todd has many, many years experience doing this. So he's going to take the end of that piece of glass off of there and he'll have a hollow cylinder. And by shaping it just so, he'll be able to submerge the open tip of this cylinder of glass down into the pool of glass in the furnace. And that will prevent him from inhaling hot air. We can't, we really don't have the lung power to draw the glass all the way up into that white tube and then all the way up the pipe into our mouth. That would take a, a, a <laughs> vacuum of extreme strength to get that all the way up in there. And what will happen is when Todd starts uh, doing the snorkeling in the furnace, he'll wind up bringing the glass up to the opening of the blowpipe and it kind of slams against that and stops. Also clogs the blowpipe, which means he has to clean it before he can use it again because there's a surface of solid glass on there. So you can see right now he's opened up the cylinder, getting this all worked out, and then in just a few moments what you'll see is he'll take a pair of tweezers and on one side of this cylinder he'll start pulling it over and extending the lip of it. And then he'll curve the glass away from the blowpipe a little bit. And this will give him a shape that he can hold comfortably while entering the furnace. And then, okay, so he's got a little bit of opening there to do. He needs to have a fairly good size opening there so he can get the glass up in it. And then once he's getting this shape, he'll pull the uh, end of the glass over a little bit, kind of like a, a cowling, if you will. And then to be ready to get the glass shape ready to go in the furnace. So there's the hollow tube. Now, if we wanted to fill that, we could open it up a little wider and then Foster and I, instead of uh, standing here watching him and doing nothing better, could actually gather up clear glass and drop it in there. So, 
That's right. So why aren't we doing that? Because this is more fun. And Foster and I aren't ready to work today. So, <laughs> but Todd does this all the time, and uh, several of the folks that have observed our videos have asked about snorkeling. And we will do it again on the Facebook Live presentation. No? Maybe not. Okay. He's going to make it. Okay, so you can see how he let it curve over, and now he's going to pull the tip to a bit of a point. He's going to open this up a little bit, so one side of the opening is extended a little further away from the pipe than the other. And this curvature means that he'll be able to stand at the furnace. That surface will now make full contact with the pot of glass that's in the furnace, and then when he sucks in on the blowpipe, that will prevent any air from going in. Now, I've been told, none of us have really ever experienced this, because we do know what we're doing, but I've been told that if you don't get that down into the glass, it is possible to suck in hot air, but typically, the pipe gets so hot that you can't hold it before you could go and inhale a lung full of hot air. But that furnace is running at 2,030 degrees. So here we go, you can see the profile of the glass. Todd will raise it up, put it over, down into the surface, and then he'll begin to draw in on the blowpipe, just like drinking from a soda straw. When he comes out, you'll see the clear glass hung off the end of it, and there it is. So now that's full of clear glass, and this is how we make veiled cane, or if we just want to fill an opaque color as he's doing right now, we have that color on the outside, we're filled with clear on the inside. He's going to use his tagliole now, the metal paddle, to kind of shape it a little bit, and then he'll bring it on back to a cylindrical shape to work with it. Once he gets it into a cylinder, then he's going to change it into a rectangle. Can we do an octagon too? No, no octagons <laughs> today. <laughs> anyway, that's what snorkeling is all about. So there really wasn't a lot of high drama to it, but now you'll see him roll on the marver, straighten out that edge, and then he'll probably clip off some of that clear that's extended, though he doesn't absolutely have to. And then once he gets this into a shape and heat it up to where he can make his rectangle, what he's going toward is making more of these little square murini that you see right here. And these are ones that were made yesterday, and they'll be used in the piece that's uh, done on the Facebook Live presentation. So you're going to see the steps that lead us to that, but then that will all have to rest until tomorrow before it would be used in another piece. So Todd's got his cylinder going. He's going to get some of the junk off the end. He's going to cut a jack line. Come over here so you can see, get a perspective on it. You can see how he's cutting that big wad of clear off of the end. He'll get rid of that in a few moments. And now he's going to start to flatten it. He'll turn it. and make a rectangular shape. He'll also press the sides of it to give it a nice straight line. There we go, okay. So, actually he's done something that's even smarter than what I was thinking. He cut a little ball on the end of that and he's gonna use that for gripping the gather so that he doesn't lose any of the color. So that little ball that he cut on the end, he will dip in water and cool it and then when it comes time to pull the cane, he'll grip that with his diamond shears and pull it on out. So he's got a little bit more of the squaring up to do here. And we'll see him use the paddle. Get it nice and even across there. And then once he's got a good rectangular shape on it, the goal is to drive heat. How do they become little squares? They get cut. So this is, if you cut this right now, this would be really big squares. These would be about an inch and a half, two inches across. But when he pulls the cane, it's going to stretch out to the point that they're about, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch across. It'll be a piece of cane 
about three and a half feet long. And since he's going to do this alone, the length of that cane is only limited by his wingspan with his arms. And he's got a neat little trick he may show us where he puts it on the floor and uses his foot to hold it in place. Aha! Get a little extra foot or two out of that. So he's getting this hot. He needs the heat distributed evenly throughout that gather of white. He's got the end of the piece cooled once in the water. Now he's cooling the pipe a little bit because the depth of the heating is running a little bit more heat. He's really pretty deep in there. There he got, drops it in the water again. This heat, Todd? Okay, so he's got enough heat in it. You saw him quench the bottom of the piece in the water. And it's when he comes out that he'll walk over to his bench, grab his shears, and start pulling. Keeps an eye on it to make sure it's an even heat throughout. It should be a uniform color, and it is. As he hangs it straight down, it elongates a little. Another drop of water to help cool that ball on the end. And now he pulls in a nice, smooth, easy pattern. And he inverts the iron and the glass to control the thinning and the way that it falls. The glass falls from whatever's up high. You'll notice that as he inverts it, now it starts to pull away from the pipe some. He's thinned that out at the bottom. And now it's pulling from the pipe and it'll go back and forth a little bit. And he can actually feel from the way it pulls how hot it is. Now he can lay that down if he wants to. He puts the pipe on the floor, steps on it with a well-insulated boot, and now he can pull with both hands and get the length he wants out of it. And then what he'll do after that in a few moments, once it's stabilized and not uh, wobbly all over the place, he'll lay it down on those strips of wood you see behind him, and then he'll break it free of the blowing iron. And that fell, but that's all right, because these are only going to need to be cut into about a half inch or three quarters of an inch thickness. And he breaks that off, and now... Uh, there we go. And that's what they are. So you can see they're still hot. It's making the wood smoke there. We might even be able to uh, see the window in that if we grab something and hold it on edge maybe, a pair of gloves, maybe. and he's got that up in the air, and now you can see right down through the center, and there we go. Now, because that's not a round shape, we need to anneal that. Um, we've told you before about how annealing relieves the stresses in the glass. And that piece was fairly thick, and it had corners on it because it was rectangular. And so the cooling would not take place evenly. If it was a real thin uh, diameter, you might get away with it even if it's squared. But when you have a larger piece of glass that's squared off like that, you've got to uh, anneal it or else you run the risk of it shattering because the stress is at the corners. So, thank you very much, Todd. We really enjoyed that. Those of you that uh, have been with us on the Facebook Live will be there at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be making a vase, a special order vase for someone. It's been, uh, I think, the way it was promoted as the uh, stained glass window vase. But it will use these murini that you see right here, oriented so that you're looking through them. Again, a reminder to join us with the Cats for Kids promotion, $60 each. International shipping would be extra. And you know, we're really tickled that we can even say international shipping because since we started these broadcasts, we've picked up quite a few folks from overseas and we're really happy to have you with us. Half the proceeds go to the charity. Their pieces are a limited edition. We'll only be doing this for the month of March, so get your orders in now. 
And thank you very much. Have a great day if you're not going to join us, but please do in about 10 minutes over on Facebook Live. So long.